ripen, I'll try hard not to be forgotten again. Hello, we are back, and, and we are also here with the people who are not in the room but are with us by live stream today and this evening. Hello to our live stream group from all over the world. We, we especially want to say hello to our live stream viewers in Russia and we'd like to have Natasha come up. Natasha, come up. So we have a lot of people tuning in from Russia, so Natasha. So we want to say, I, wait, I know that Richard and Oksana are IAGC representatives in Russia. Привет, Richard and Oksana. Привет. And Galina, hello. Galina, привет. And any of our other Russian viewers? Все те русские наши зрители, которые смотрят, вам огромный теплый привет от Роберта, от Стивена и от всех нас. We hope you enjoy this and join up for the rest of the live stream. Я надеюсь, что вы к нам сейчас присоединитесь и уже от нас не уйдете, будете с нами до конца. Because as you, you're going to see, we have a lot of fun and we're going to learn a lot. Потому что мы так будем веселиться, мы так много научимся. Thank you, Natasha. And our live stream viewers from other countries, from Brazil, from France, from anywhere else, welcome. We are, for, for our live stream viewers, we thought it would also, we, we want to just kind of do a, a quick summary of the introduction that we made this, mor this, this afternoon. I uh, am Steve Gilligan. <laughs> that means uh, that I must be Robert Diltz. And we met here, at, we are at the University of Santa Cruz, of California at Santa Cruz. Which w is an auspicious place because where Robert and I met over 40 years ago. And it's where we met as students of John Grinder and Richard Bandler, the co-founders of NLP. So it's really great to be back here. We were also students of Gregory Bateson, who was a teacher here. Uh, and, a, and an important influence on both of us and in NLP and generative change work. In, in our sharing that we did uh, before we went live, I think we have, anybody count how many different countries we have here? I think there's, a, there's at least 20. There's at least 20 and, and at least, and every single continent except Antarctica, we have representative here. <laughs> No penguins today. No penguins. Um, although, you know, Stephen and I, one of our, our things that we share is that we are both half Irish. Gilligan has the father half. Diltz has the mother half, which was Garrigan. So it was Garrigan and Gilligan. And, uh, Generative change has an Irish father and an Irish mother. <laughs> and, uh, and we both went to all boys Catholic, Catholic high, high schools school. in the San Francisco Bay Area. Uh, so we have, and and we and we were both students here at the University of California, and uh, we were saying earlier that um, uh, this this place for us represents this, this place of, of beginnings, and it's where we began, where NLP began, and we think it's really. Uh, important and powerful that this is where this next stage of generative change begins. And we begin tonight, I think, a, a very interesting new chapter, in, hopefully, in, you know, for the world, uh, for what we all here will bring to the world and those watching the live stream. Hopefully, we can look back many, many years from now on our deathbed <laughs> and say, what I remember was that incredible IAGC conference in Santa Cruz. That's, that's where the next level of my whole being began. 
That was the beginning of the most important part of my life. So, I know that's what I intend to look back on today, for today. On a serious note, we've got about 90 minutes tonight, and what we would like to do with you all is unfold a framework of what we mean by generative change. And we mentioned um, in the earlier in the afternoon that generative change is, is sort of the umbrella uh, space that holds these three different tracks of generative trance, which represents especially the work that I have done over the last 40 years. And then on the other side, there's, there's generative consulting, which is based on the success factor modeling work which has to do with application of generative change to entrepreneurs, companies, organizations, and leaders. And then from our collaboration, uh, particularly over the last 15 years, or actually, remember our, I can always remember by how old my daughter yes. was, but I think Zoe was, was three. three. And, and Julia was four. Julia was four, and Andrew would be six. Six. Yeah. So our kids were like that, and Robert and I met after 20 years, and it's been a, a really great generative collaboration, one of the most meaningful experiences I've had in my life. I think I'm that, that's the same, the same here. Yeah. Yeah. So, so what, what we're looking to do in the IGC is articulate this generative deep structure that has many, many different applications. So, fr and from this notion of the deep structure, as we're saying, there's many different ways that that formulates in surface structures or in contents in businesses, in individuals, in conversations between people. So what we want to do um, tonight is just give a general overview of the generative change model and then really look at the six steps of generative change. Uh, by modeling them in terms of supporting each other on that and then asking you to find a partner and uh, support your partner and be supported by your partner in terms of doing these six steps. And, and the other, our other goal is that the focus that we're taking tonight is for what it is that you want to be doing for this uh, conference. So we're going to apply these fundamental principles of generative change specifically for you and the conference. So that's going to be our focus. What do you most want to create through this conference? What do you most want to achieve while you are here? We both like to begin uh, every workshop with a poem, partly to honor our Irish roots, but partly to really emphasize that in creativity, um, we're really using language poetically and musically at least as much as literally. So we're really looking to use language to open a space that includes but transcends words at the same time. The uh, <clears throat> great writer um, Emerson used to say that, that in fact every word was a fossil poem. That means every word, it has a history in it. it we're not the first ones to speak them and so they carry a history but they're also a poem in that no word is really ultimately literal. It always has other layers of meaning. So we have a special sort of the poet laureate of the IGC, <laughs> Nick LaForce, and we thought it'd be great to invite Nick so, to come up. So those of you who have been in, <laughs> those of you who have been in, those of you who have been in generative consulting have heard me already cite a number of Nick LaForce's poetry, We Are Messengers, The World, and The Variable. So tonight we're going to ask Nick to read, to, we're going to have a, a Nick LaForce poem and you're going to get it from the poet's mouth. Where's the mic? And uh, the mic. I'm going to, I'll give him mine, he can use mine. Um, and the title of this poem we thought would be aptly titled, uh, I, can, I can just use uh, yeah, I, I think it's good to okay. give him his own space. Okay. Here we go. How many of you have heard Nick's poems before? The man is, is connected to the source. Hmm? Well, thank you. Yeah, thank you, Nick. So what have you chosen to open this? Well, we sort of <laughs> collaboratively <laughs> <laughs> uh, 
shows. That's about, I think it's about setting intention. Yeah, actually, for me, if, if, <clears throat> if you think of generative change, you're thinking about what's beyond you, what you can create that actually not only lives in your life and lives in your moments, that speaks through you, but that goes beyond you. And that touches something that can actually move other people or move the world. When you can do that, then you are working with magic. And I think this kind of intention setting, this desire that we have that, bring us, that brings us together here, which is we all want to do something that's going to make a difference in the world. And so for me, one of the most powerful ways to do that is through our words. Mm. That the words we speak convey not only the idea and the message behind the word, but they convey an energy. And that energy can sink into the heart and shift mountains inside of you. And so when you can set an intent that does that, then you can create amazing things. And so this poem is about that opportunity to look beyond yourself. And that's what it's called. Look beyond yourself. Look beyond yourself. The keys to your heart's desire lie beyond the eyes and ears you hold against the world and cannot be claimed even in the writings of all the wrongs you have suffered in your life. The past is not a path to fulfillment. Your history is for lessons and not for life. Passion lives in the present and in the future now waiting for you, ready to deliver your deepest wish. Passion lives in the present and in the future now waiting for you, ready to deliver your deepest wish. And Nick, Nick is one of our presenters and will be presenting on Wednesday, Wednesday night. night. Yes. This about time. wording the world. Wording the world. How your words create the world that you live in and can make a world for you to want to belong to and have others want to belong to. So thank you. Thank, thank you, you both. By the way, I do want to say one last thing. This is kind of like a dream being on a stage with these two guys. <laughs> and looking out at these, I mean, all these beautiful faces, I know why they love doing what they do. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you both. Thank you. Okay, so let's get to work. What is generative change about? If there's one word that you could use to represent gen what generative change is about, it is creativity. We are seeing even more what I would, grew up in San Francisco in the 60s. I thought it was all about love. but. I think that creativity may be even more important than love because we see now that creativity is not something that just a few special people do, but it is the heart and soul of everything we know as reality in the world. Creativity has been shown now by neuroscience that everything that we humans know, uh, we create. And so it brings up the question, what is it that you, we want to create? And what the work is, is a support for how to do that in a mindful, amazing way. In the service of love. Uh, so, and I think what we mean by love is, it's, it's about relationship, rapport, resonance, that creates a field for generativity. We, you know, the, another key, I think, what, what generativity for me means a type of creativity, because some, some type of creativity is just kind of remaking the same thing. But generativity is creativity where you're making something completely new that has not existed before. And again, lest we think of that as just something a few people have the capacity to do, we want to point out that there are times in the life of every system, every individual, every marriage, every family, every culture, every business, where what you have done in the past will not help you to go forward into the future. 
This is not every day. Most of the times you can, you can rearrange the chairs on the Titanic. Most of the time you can use versions of what has worked in the past. Where we, those of us who are change practitioners, coaches, consultants, therapists, we come into people's lives where what they've done in the past can't help them in the, in the present or in the future. <clears throat> Another thing about this metaphor Steve was using about the chairs on the Titanic means this, you, you rearranging this chairs is a superficial change and it's not going to save the boat from running into you know, an iceberg and sinking. You've got to go to a deeper place, right? So also for us, generativity is about profound change. It's about deep structure change. So you can have superficial creativity that just kind of, again, rearranges what you already know. But for us, generative change is about deep, you know, uh, change that is, is actually change in the foundation of what you're doing. And again, you, you can look at this in an in individual, in small systems, in big systems. I think most of us would agree that the major systems of the world today need a generative change. <laughs> you know, I, I was in, ironically, with all due uh, uh, appreciation to my Russian brothers and sisters, we, we were in Russia the night uh, that Trump was elected. Um, <laughs> And I, th I think it was just like, oh, shit. <laughs> and, you know, I, we get a lot, a lot of messages. And, and I got about, I think, three different videos people sent me of um, Otto Scharmer, uh, who does the, um, what is that work called? Christina theory. is part of, sorry? Theory of you. Theory, theory of you. And he was saying, at these times of crisis, you can either try to do more of the same, and he suggested that Hillary Clinton, for better and worse, represented that to people, or you can just tear the, the fucking building down, which, guess who represents that particular option, or you go into a, a generative conversation. So we're, we're saying that we're not talking about these things just in terms of boutique changes, or things that would be nice to add on to life, but things that are crucial, particularly at given times in the development of a system. It, those of you uh, who were at the, the we were, were joining us in the previous two weeks for the generative consulting program, we were saying times often include things like growth, rapid growth into some new area, or a crisis where it is absolutely clear that what has worked before is no longer going to work and take you to the next place. Or transition, where you are really in between a very deep change where, again, you're no longer where you used to be, you're not yet where you're going to be, and you have to deal with a lot of uncertainty, a lot of risk, uh, and a lot of you know, potential danger. So these are often the times where, where we need generative change. So what we, we talk about in the generative change work are these three underlying principles that can be expressed in so many, many, many different ways. We have a couple of things where we say that in generative change work, as, we, as you'll be seeing, as, and, and many of you already know, the importance of a generative state, what we call a, an intention where often when, there, when you're in times of uncertainty, you cannot know the destination. You don't know where you're going to arrive at. You only know, I have to go in that direction. The desired state is that way. Uh, Partly because there's no single map that will adequately describe the situation or provide a solution. So you need to have, in order to generate something new, multiple contradictory maps simultaneously. Does that sound fun or what? <laughs> Does that sound like today's world or <laughs> what? <laughs> or the challenge of today's world. And, and that actually brings us to the notion of what we call a, a generative relationship. And the foundation of all generative work is one plus one does not make two, it makes three or more. And so that's the in implication of generative. It generates something beyond itself, as Nick was saying. 
So to be able to have this sense, for example, of Rob, Robert and I were looking to have a generative relationship, then we would need to be attuned to our position. My, I would need to be attuned to my position. And me to my position. But I would need equally to be able to be attuned to Robert's position. And simul same thing on my side. Can I actually attune, hold my position and tune to Steve's? And what we're looking for are the differences. We're looking for when Robert consciousness has a different map than Steve consciousness. That's how we make babies. <laughs> A little bit of this and a little bit of that. But that's where the importance, by the way, of aesthetic intelligence comes in. Because when you take those differences, too much of one begins to become a problem, right? It creates imbalance, disharmony. So we're looking for that, that harmonious bringing together of, as Steve says, a little bit of Robert, a little bit of Steve. And then that, we keep adding these in and suddenly that's what makes you know, the beautiful image or the beautiful music. So just simple examples of aesthetic relationships would be a good meal, um, a musical orchestra, um, a sports team, um, a, a business team. Any high-performing business team. The SFM leadership team. <laughs> My leadership team. Is the, what, again, where you have difference, but that difference complements each other into, in a way where it it works together harmoniously and beautifully. Or the, as say the Robert Steve, uh, Robert has changed my work so much. It's been such a pleasure and I haven't given up anything, yeah. but it's really just expanded in some ways that I didn't imagine uh, as possible before our relationship. So in a generative relationship, it goes both ways, right? You're both growing through the relationship. The difference adds. Uh, so it's not, okay, I, I'll give up this and you give up that and then we can, you know, do something. It's, okay, we are fully committed to this, our filter, but we can expand. We say include and, and expand. Uh, and that's where you really get something that's, that's ultimately new and unpredictable. Um, the other thing, and I think this relates to that, is how we deal with potentially negative interferences, which often come from differences. Okay, uh, I want to go this way, I want to go that way. Now this could suddenly become a problem. So we need to hold those differences in a creative field, in a creative environment that allows us to be able to uh, you know, appreciate what they can both bring to, again, coming back to Nick's poem, to something beyond ourselves. So this uh, positive uh, relationship to the obstacles that are integral parts of any meaningful change is, you know, something we will be focusing on continuously because we think it's one of the unique contribution that generative change makes. It didn't originate with us. Uh, our common teacher, Milton Erickson, was just astonishing about how to welcome these strange, disturbing patterns and then be able to engage with them in a way that they became a resource in front of your very eyes. I practiced the Japanese martial art of Aikido for uh, 16 years. And it's the same, same exploration of if you're given this goal, is that how do you relationally engage with it? You know, our, our sort of fight or flight uh, automatic thing is when this happens. And, and this usually um, creates more aggression. It, it creates more hatred. It creates more negativity. So we're looking really at this point of connection between these differences and what it means for both to stay grounded and then make babies together. So in Aikido, if I'm coming with this aggressive point, <laughs> 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 
So, again, the idea here is... He loves it when we do that. I, <laughs> I, I love to be there. forward to that, don't you? <laughs> I, I, you know, yes, I do. <laughs> and, uh, again, one of the big basic principles of generative change is that, you know, this, this, what I'm doing is actually neither good nor bad, dangerous or not dangerous. What will make it one way or the other for Steve is exactly how he responds to it, which could be thousands of ways. So that's part of what generativity is about. How do I, how can I shift my relationship with what is there in order to bring out something better, something new? And we begin to see in that this, ready to go to the first yeah. principle? We, we see in that that the experience gets created out of the relational connection. So we you know, we sometimes do these Aikido things, but if Robert is doing the same attack, yeah and we do this, then we, we take a moment and stop and say, when I meet the energy that way, how do I feel about myself? How do, how I, do I feel, feel about Robert? How do I feel about us? And Same thing here. How do I feel about Steve when he does that? How do I feel about me? How do I feel about us? Whereas if we are relationally engaging with the same thing, yeah. with that sense of get off of the line, Draw the chief. And how do you feel about that? Man? <laughs> so, so we're really looking at what are the different pieces in the conversation of the system? And what we're really looking at for generative change, how do we create a space where each piece the present state, the, the uh, desired state, the resources, the obstacles, all are given place, just like what we were doing uh, in the circle uh, before dinner. Yeah. I think another part of this conversation that maybe is, is, that's not completely obvious just from what we said is that this, this particular energy, this particular approach, actually this is only one of many, many, many possible expressions of the same thing. It's what we call the quantum expression, the quantum world, where you have, you know, uh, and in some cases, an infinite variety of possibilities of the same thing. And how we, again, how we interact with it determines which one of those expressions is the one that actually emerges or comes out. So this idea between what we call the quantum world and the classic world, the world of many possibilities and the world that we actually bring into the present, into the concrete expression. So when, when we look at the creative process, we're saying we start in this non-classical, non-physical quantum field. If you want to look, know an example of what a quantum field looks like, look at the Monet paintings. Okay? Or uh, look at how they make functional MRIs, the brain images where they take multiple images from different perspectives and drop them into a space together. And if you have maybe 25 different images, they create some sort of deep structure or archetype that represents the deeper pattern. So what, what that means practically, again, if Robert's a client or if there's a part of the system that we're working with where he said, well, he's a fucking angry bastard. Okay? And we say, we've got to get him on medication, or we've got to get him on anger control. And uh, you have to just express positive feelings if you're going to stay in this company. That's good. Okay, that's better. You see, it really works. <laughs> so we, we would be reducing that object. I think what Robert was just trying to get at, we'd be thinking that this, this pattern here is just negative anger. Right. What we're looking to do for generative change is create this working space where we can see infinite possibilities <laughs> are in this. Okay. And, and what we need to do is get from the classical where the quantum wave has collapsed to one specific back into the sort of the ocean of infinite possibilities. So we realize inside of that anger is the potential 
for so many different creative forms. And this is, the, this is what we mean by the generative state, which can be achieved through a variety of ways. We'll be, you know, we explore different ways. Uh, you know, when we talk about shamanism or other things, these are all, all modalities that help us to start to get some expression back into a, a instead of one, uh, one form, it comes back to an, a space of many forms and this is where the aesthetic intelligence comes in, I can then re-engage it in a form that is much more harmonious and that actually even serves the purpose of that state even better. This is one of the main functions of a generative state. To move from a place where it only has one meaning and one possibility to a place where it's sort of resonating and vibrating and we can see it has so many different possible meanings. Okay. That is the first step uh, in our creative process. Is this open a state where we can welcome something not as a fixed negative thing that has to be accepted, but something as a pattern that has so much potential to be so many different things in it if we just create the proper conditions for welcoming it. As a, as a metaphor, you can even think of a, of a newborn child as a kind of a much more of a quantum state because there's so many possibilities yet to be expressed. As you get older, you start to engage. This is what the whole idea of neuro-linguistic programming is about. You engage in certain programs that filter, and that's our next principle, that filter certain of those possibilities. So instead of having all the possibilities, I have a smaller range, a smaller range. One of my favorite examples of that is this study that was done by people who simply were looking at this, the number of movements that somebody would make in an hour. And they said, if you look at you know, a six months old child for one hour and you watch what they do, you'll see something like a thousand different movements with their head, with their arms. If you take the same child when they're 10 years old and you watch them for an hour, you won't see a thousand anymore. You know, of course, part of the, when we say, of course, we've gotten more efficient, you know, we've become more, you know, uh, structured in what we do. I mean, we're more effective in some ways. Again, you take the same person at 30 years old, you might be lucky to see a hundred different movements or something like that. So we start to limit, limit, limit those quantum possibilities, which on the one hand makes, you know, we can perform things more easily. But in these times of change that we were talking about, in these times of crisis, in these times of growth, in these times of transition, those no longer serve us. And if we can't get back to that quantum state, then, then that's not, now you're being really limited, right? You're caught in rigidity. So in generative change, we talk about three general types of filters. And this is a, finally an application of the mystery of the Trinity that Robert and I grew up with. <laughs> I got kicked out of Jesuit high school for challenging the mystery of the Trinity. So it's great to have an application in the name of the cognitive and the somatic and the holy field. Amen. But we're saying that the light of the quantum ocean is coming through these filters. And as those filters are set, so is projected the reality from that. I did my graduate work in psychology at Stanford and I did about uh, 30 experiments over five years on what's called state-dependent emotion. So I would hypnotically train people to get into certain emotional states, sadness, anger, or happiness, and then look at how that emotional state influenced a variety of different cognitive processes. Like remember experiences from your childhood. And people, what we found, when people were in a sad state, they would remember a preponderance of sad memories. If you take that same person and shifted them into a happy state, what they found in their childhood memories was qualitatively different. The kind of future that they would imagine from a sad state versus a happy state, 
qualitatively different. What they would notice out in the world, the interpretations that they would give, this is filters. Psychology is basically the study of filters. If we set the filters in this way, you have a social filter, you have a cognitive filter, my, my somatic state is a filter. So if I'm saying, I, I, you told me that I had infinite possibilities, and well, I just want I mean, to feel thinking comfortable. Harder, right? you're, okay. you're not thinking hard enough. Okay. I'm sure that they're there. I, I know that I should be able to feel confident. I know. I know. But you're not doing it right. I'm sorry. So, so what's wrong with that picture? <laughs> You would all say, that dude's not going to get confidence yes. because his somatic filter is locked. Yeah. So his somatic state is locking him into experiencing just a few possibilities out of infinite. Our little, our little symbol here is a prism, right? If you put a white light, right, this quantum light through it, the prism divides that into separate colors you can put different kinds of filters on the light where only certain colors show up. And then you think the whole world is that way, right? The whole sadness, right? The whole world is blue or the whole world is anger, red. Uh, so this is very key. And this is certainly where generative change, hypnosis, NLP all overlap. It's all about the state of the filters. And in fact, <coughs> That's our third premise. So this is Rob, Robert after hearing Donald Trump was elected president. <laughs> Which one? The last this one or this let's one? Hope it's the last. I could say that was me <laughs> when I heard that fuck, Trump was elected president. <laughs> so, <laughs> so we say these filters, even more important than these filters, are the human presence that's holding you. You can be holding them in really tight, mindless way, or you can be holding them like any creative former, uh, performer is holding their filters. You have the chi flowing. You have life flowing through you. Okay? And you're able to get feedback in every moment and be able to adjust your filters in every micro moment. Now, even in the little demo that we were doing when Steve was in his state of lack of confidence, if I'm holding him in the same way, come on, Steve, try harder. You can be confident. Then that set of filters is being held in this set of filters. Whereas if I was to say, good boy. <laughs> Let's take a breath together, <laughs> Steve. <laughs> that will show you what guys that go to all boys Catholic high schools do. <laughs> okay. So the... The point is that, again, you're, you can hold a set of filters within another set of filters. And that's what a large part of what you're learning as when you're doing generative trance, generative coaching, generative consulting. What are the filters that I am holding that set of filters in? And that, that interaction is going to determine a lot. So we say when you're in the, this limited set of filters, we, it's what we call crash. I'm sure all, you know, it's, not, not a new term to pretty much everybody in here. But we, it bears repeating. It's, it's an acronym that works great in English, not so good in Chinese. <laughs> we found some ways in, in French. Uh, Constricted, reactive, you're either uh, anger towards, running away, spacing out, or collapsing. Analysis, paralysis, what do I do? What's wrong? How do I get there? feeling separate and isolated, feeling hurt and hurtful. How many of you have and ever hostile. experienced a state like that? Okay. <laughs> Most of the time when people are stuck in problems, this is the main culprit. And as Steve was showing in his example of the person without confidence, in that state, you cannot think of any way out, right? Oh, Steve, let's be generative. You know, come on, let's, let's think okay. of some new ideas. Okay, yeah, I mean, I'm gonna go to that. Generative change certification, and damn it, I'm going to be generative. <laughs> Where do I sign up? So again, the point is that it's like it's like the set, if you set the prism filter to only filter blue, and you're asking it to find red, it's never going to find it. So this is key. 
and, and again, that's whether it's an individual or whether it's a part of an individual, by the way. Sometimes we see that happening. You can be actually partially, only part is crashed, but that part is filtering these things out. It can be a team of individuals. It can be a whole culture of individuals. Uh, so this is this notion of, um, again, the, 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 the filter is going to determine what you perceive as possible. Let us repeat that. The filter is going to determine what is possible for you. So if you keep getting the same result, the same outcome, that is telling you the filter that you're connected to. Because the universe itself is changing in every moment but you get the same damn reality over and over and over. It's your filters that you need to look at. And then to do that, you have to really tune in mindfully to the space in which you're holding your thoughts, your awareness of your body, your awareness of your relationships. That's what we call coach state. Now, I'm sure that they've heard this many times, but Maybe we should say COACH is an acronym too, isn't it? Yes. Ah, and here's a beautiful <laughs> example of a COACH state. Okay. And just imagine what this guy went through. Right? Nelson Mandela. 30 plus years in prison, uh, torture, all of his people under that hardship. Do you think you could look like this? I mean, so what was he doing? that allowed him to be in this particular state okay, in order to, to step into the, the next moment and the next and the next. That's one of our practical questions. And so again, I'm sure no news to most of you, but that acronym means that we are centered in ourselves somatically. Get down, get underneath your verbal mind. We're sort of saying, th these are all ways, everybody, of, of let's, let's say they're all ways of getting beyond the programming, right? There are ways of getting beyond that limited state of the filters. I get deeper than that. I center beneath it. I open beyond it. Right. So, one, one term for this would be competency plus. <laughs> so you're able to get all your ducks in a row. You're able to have disciplined performance to achieve things in a consistent way. But to grow, to change, to make a difference, you need competency plus. This is generative changes way of talking about what would be the competency plus state. That A is about awareness, right? We need more, more and more nuanced awareness. We, many, you know, where, where, when you get in a certain state of filters, very often you're not aware of that state of the filters. And it takes great practice. And it, sometimes that's why you need a coach, you need a consultant, because we're not even aware that my filters are in this state. You know, I, I can be saying to Steve, I'm not in crash, damn it. I'm, I'm not crashed. Why do you say I'm crashed? I'm, I'm not saying you're in crash, okay? <laughs> Just calm down. <laughs> I am calm. Okay, okay fine, fine, Who says fine, I'm not fine. calm? Let's now just, both of us get into coach states, okay? Okay, okay. you have I'm your trying really thought. hard. I'm in coach state, how about you? Yeah, yeah I'm right. coach state. <laughs> okay. so, so again, the, this challenge of, of awareness and where we sometimes, we've got to reach outside of ourselves to get that awareness. But it, I, I think if anything, for me, one of the great things about uh, generative change is it is an ongoing awareness practice. My own life, I'm constantly more and more aware, right? It is, a, it is a constant realization of all these different influences and programs that we can get beyond. Some days are better than others. <laughs> Absolutely. I, I mean, so, sometimes you're, you're really into it and then you realize I've, I've really been sort of out of that connection for some yeah. time. Let's come back to it. Yeah. Let's come back. Which is that sea of connection. Okay, and so those are the three principles. Creativity, conversation, filters, crash or coach. And then what, what we want to explore tonight 
again, because I'm sure that many of you are already aware of these things, and even um, our six-step uh, generative change model. Um, and there are, ver there are variations of this. Those of you who were just here in the generative consulting, we did a, a basically a seven-step variation of this, uh, working with companies. But what we, what we want to go over, in fact, what, we, what our, part of our message tonight is that all three of these tracks of generative change, generative trance, generative coaching, generative consulting, share a common deep structure, a common, a common path uh, of, of, a, of steps, a storyboard. And when you know that inside, without, and how do I say, those, that deep structure can be adapted to many, many, many different contents. If you know that deep structure, the content part becomes much easier to just work out as details, as nuance. But we want to we want to practice this to get this deep structure down right at the beginning of this conference, so that we all share that common sense of this this path of generative change. So, first step is really about emptying out to uh, let go of all your wrong frames. You know, in creativity research, when the second step of the four steps of creativity is what they call take a rest. Go for a walk. Take your mind off the problem. And if you're lucky and you're well prepared, the third step, the, the illumination, some new idea comes. The creativity researchers, basically there is a consensus that what's happening there is you're releasing all of your wrong answers. And so you're always in this process of letting go, letting go, letting go, and letting something new come in. Um, you, that sense of being locked in this, we want to say, I want you, if I'm going to be coaching you uh, in some way, first, before we start to talk about the problem or even about what you want, let's make a connection to the best of Robert Let's connect the best of Robert to the universe. Sorry for the California term. <laughs> right? But the sense of something in me, I feel goodness. I feel a connection to the goodness of the world. Right? This is a basic skill that is the first step for doing any, any creativity. And there's thousands of ways and many different vocabularies to do it. But the deep structure and part of what we're going to be working with here tonight is what we're going to be calling content-free deep structure. So it's not going to be about the content or the specifics. It's what is the deep structure of that state? Once you know that, then I, if I'm going into a business meeting, okay, I know I'm going to, I can work, work at it this way. If I'm dealing with my child, okay, I'm going to do it a different way. But it's always the same deep structure, and I know what needs to be done. So that empty out, open the channel, clear the channel. We say clear the mechanism. That's always step one. And to be able to use that field of infinite possibilities <laughs> in some sort of uh, intentional way that leads to the, to the step two, what's this? What's this? So Nick, in his poem, you know, he's saying, as we look beyond yourself, that future that's waiting for you there. What's the future that is waiting to be created with you, through you? So once I have a generative field and a positive intention, third step is what would be my best performance state to be able to move in the world to make this happen? So the difference between a pure coach state or and what we're field, calling a, we a generative say. state is we're adding intentionality and we're adding this connection to specific parts of the field. So it's actually starting, it's filtering for that. Because the goal is I want to bring, I'm going to adjust my filters to be able to bring that into this concrete expression. So these are the precursors to getting at the question, what do I do? Usually when people come to you for consulting, for coaching, for therapy, they're in the, what do I do, what do I do, what do I do, what do I do? 
And, and your first, usually your response is, what do I do, what do I do, what do I do, what do I do? <laughs> and our, really our, our sincere response is nothing. You gotta, you gotta empty out. You have to feel your connection to an intention. You have to organize yourself to be in a creative state. Then step four is how are we gonna get from the present state to the desired state? And the research on creativity and flow shows clearly that you got to work in small chunks. If you have just one big goal, you know, um, it's not going to happen. You've got to chunk it down. So here we have our timeline. So we're thinking what would be the steps to take. And then usually by that time, we have already come to step five, so we shouldn't really call it step five. But the demons attack. Dun, 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 dun. Just when you thought, okay, I'm going to go for confidence. What happens? Oh, no, you're not. Ah, 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 you're stupid. You're crazy. You can't do it. Who the fuck do you think you are anyway? But, do you have a license for that? It's going to cost you money. Hey. So th this is, again, really one of the most important parts of generative change. Usually we say within five seconds of a person stating a goal, you can, you can see uh, the obstacles activate. Within five seconds, this person said, this is what I want. Something inside said no. And this is actually one of our fundamental principles of generative change work, which is everything contains its opposite. As soon as I say, I want more happiness, the opposite will start to emerge. It's, you know, Isaac Newton said years ago, for every action, there's an equal and opposite reaction. I mean, and that's the same thing is true psychologically. For every goal, there's going to be equal and opposite obstacles. And we say, we like to say, the brighter the light, the darker the shadow. The bigger the goal, the bigger the demons that will come. So one of the biggest trainings is when the obstacle comes, you go into coach field. Okay? It's a training. It's a training, you know, one of the main trainings that I did in Aikido over 16 years. As soon as you feel somebody grab you, you relax and take their energy through you into the earth. Okay. So that allows you to have a curious, skillful coach relationship to what just entered the system. If you crash at that point, the system is going to crash too. So this is where this whole issue uh, and the reality of this issue of what we're calling the quantum possibility comes in. This obstacle is coming in a certain form. If we can meet it, hold it, that's the H part of coach, bring it into this more, sh what we're calling a shimmering state of possibilities, then we can actually begin to transform. That's the notion of transform the obstacle. It takes a different form that actually can become, uh, a, in some ways, a guardian or a guide. Um, the final part is, is practice. We have, so we have about 45 minutes left. And what Stephen and I wanted to do tonight is, is we want to do an um, activity uh, specifically around the, taking these six steps on a deep structure, in their deep structure form, and applying them to your intention for this conference. If this is a conference on generative change, let us approach it generatively. Let us set a direction that you would like for this conference. And let the, us this pretty much content-free process that we're going to walk you through is something that I really recommend as a daily practice, something that I do in terms of just thinking, here I am at the beginning of the day. Uh, I, I imagine what is on my schedule for the day. I then set up a timeline and I just go through these simple processes, coach state.
intention, what's my intention for going through this day or what we're going to be asking you to do for these four days. Somatic model. What would be my uh, generative state? What resources can I connect to out in the field? And, and when, once you start asking your body this, your body will start showing you things that are very different from what you thought were going to happen here. Now, key to this, and we're going to demo this with each other, is that we're actually not trying to fit in the content yet. So in other words, rather than trying to think, yeah, what is it that I want to do today? You're just holding that intention for a direction. And when you take the steps, you're not actually thinking, well, okay, tomorrow am I going to do this, this, or this? You're letting the body form the deep structure, right? You're setting the filters because then whatever happens is going to take form and take shape through those filters. So we're actually trying to say, set the filters for the process first. I know if on day one, my, if my filters are like that, it's different than if my filters are like that. Even, no matter what's happening, no matter what uh, presentation I attend. So we're, we're further saying practically as a practitioner that having these content free deep structures really will be a very helpful guide because what, what, what's happening with the client and what will happen probably very likely with you is you'll get caught in the drama content. You'll get caught in the details and, and then the reaction to the deep emotional details, the challenges, so forth. So if you feel underneath, we got coach field, intention, generative state, walk the steps, transform the demons, move it forward in, in, uh, in a way into the future. As a practice. So what we're gonna do is, we're gonna, and I'd like to uh, enlist our, some of our leadership team members in this, if they would be willing. We wanna have, we're gonna do a, a time practice and then have you do, we're gonna do a time demo with each other, have you do a time practice with a partner. We're gonna do it in a couple of stages. We're gonna begin with the first couple of steps then we'll do the next couple of steps and then the final couple of steps. So, Robert, I'll be the client first. Yeah. As Robert's doing it without English or Russian or whatever, he's just sort of <laughs> doing a deep structure guidance. We're going to do the first three steps. And so, uh, what if, if uh, someone from the leadership team, we, we just, uh, if you let us know when it's been five minutes. Okay. So, Again, you're going to get together with a partner. Um, Steve, just, I want you to just, let's both take a few moments and kind of enter into a place where you feel like you can be really uh, open, sort of, as we like to say, empty out, or settle in, settle down, feeling present and particularly centered in a place of the, where if you feel physically here and just your somatic gesture for that. And then as you bring your attention to the next four days, thinking what do you most want to create in these next four days? that you would most like to create for yourself through this process and find what your somatic model of that would be. Great. Great. As you really keep your attention to yourself and to that intention for the future, kind of reach out into this bigger field of resources and which resources in terms of teachers, guardians, things from nature, anything that really can help you to most get that intention and what would be a somatic model for that state.
feet. That's as long as it takes. And Steve would, would do it with me. Three more minutes. Got all the time we need in the next three minutes. So, Robert, in order to open this creative space for you for the next four days, to start with that sense of just have that nice sense of the best of you. And when you really feel at peace, at whole, connected. Life, you're okay. Everything's okay. Great. Awesome. Just you're breathing that into you. And from there, Robert, only in a way that honors that connection, just invite you to begin to sense what is the deepest creative intention that you want to carry over the next four days? That's good. Awesome. Enjoying thinking about what would be your best creative pattern, your best creative state to move through each day to make your dream. Great. That's great. moment to sense those three. And again, you, you might be coaching how to optimize that state with a person, but this is all you're thinking inside. You know, what's step one, what's step two, what's step three? Just sort of just these deep structures you're carrying underneath all the all the conversation. So step one, you're opening this field, right? Opening to the quantum field. Number two, you're picking a direction, a direction within that field of all possibilities. That's what I want to manifest now. Then number three is I'm connecting out to what are, what, what is the, what is the state of filters I'm going to need for that? And what in this field of resources is going to help me maintain that state? We did, Stephen and I did that with each other. We did it in five minutes. You're lucky. We're going to give you a whole seven minutes wow. to do it with a partner. Um, both ways, right? Just we did it both ways in five. So we're going to ask you to find a partner. Um, uh, we know that language could be an issue, but you also know this is going to be mostly somatic. So um, was that five? John, first one, five minutes each. No, it's five minutes. Five total. minutes total. Three minutes each. So seven minutes. You get a so if you get two Irish guys having a conversation for only seven minutes, that's a miracle. <laughs> <laughs> so you've got you've got space out beyond the chairs. Uh, find a partner. We we will be ringing the bell and calling you back in seven minutes, and then we're going to do the second stage. If you need a partner, raise your hand. Need a partner, please raise your hand and move towards somebody behaving like you. Need a partner. Something's out there in space that regulations don't cover. Ladies and gentlemen, please be given the The regulations don't cover.
Let's gather back, everybody. We are going to be continuing this journey through the, this deep structure of generative change. So, once you have these first, we kind of, this was sort of the first three steps, right? Coach field. Open up, open out. Into that field of possibilities, set a direction, an intention. Prepare yourself, this is what we're calling, that what's the best performance state that I can be in, given that intention. The next steps, as we go into steps four and five, are about moving into action. And as we said, that's almost invariably where you will start to face the obstacles. And you want to keep, hold those obstacles connected to the generative state and the coach field. Almost invariably what happens when we meet an obstacle, some part of that field collapses, right? Our attention retracts. We lose the sense of our direction. We lose the sense of ourself. So this is part of the, the coaching process. What we're going to do is we'll do the same thing. We'll take each other through. Now, this is going to be sort of moving into action, meeting the obstacles, working with the obstacles. Again, if the uh, Jean-Francois, if you can help us, we're going to set, we're going to look at somewhere around five to seven minutes for this. And, um, and then you'll have your so chance to practice. At, at three minutes, you say uh, three minutes. Yeah. Just make sure we, we both have equal. So I'll be coach first? Yeah, it might be coach. So, Robert, let, let's tune into those first three steps. And it's the practice that allows you to use your subtle body, your subtle mind. So just sensing these amazing four days ahead. I'm just going to ask you, we're going to do it two, two times. The first time, just take one step for each day and just feel what arises in terms of what I want to do in the first day. Somatic model. Great. 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 And was the second day. Wow, what a difference a day makes. Feel all things. Whoopee. Yay. And then the third day. Listen to your body, your embodied intelligence. That's good. That's good. That's great. Something about opening and then moving to last day. Settling, feeling the earth, the coach, letting the movement come. That's good. That's great. Sense of feeling. Yep, B, I did it. Yatta. Yatta. So we, we go back. And 
a lot of times it's, it's good to do the first timeline without obstacles, just kind of going through the positive blueprint. And then we say, let's look at some of the things that happen. So what we're going to focus on here is each time you take a step and open, sense what obstacle, either internal, external, what I'm going to ask you to do is move from the coach, bring the coach date and become the obstacle, mm. and then hold the question, what is the obstacle trying to bring, and then use that to come back to the coach date. Make sense? Okay. Start to do this. <laughs> coach, bring it into coach. That's good. Something is trying. That's good. Trying to be added. That's good. Using that energy. Next step. Oops. Obstacle. Coach. Release. Step into the obstacle in a coach state. Relax the head. Coach feel. That's good. Next day, so many things to want to accomplish. So many. Ah. Obstacle. Relax. Coach. Relax the shoulder. Just like a long distance run. Ready to the fourth step. Excitement, integration, obstacle. Wow, great. Welcome. Welcome. That's good. Cool. My turn. Okay. He took five minutes out of seven. God. <laughs> okay, we better do this fast. <laughs> <laughs> so let's take first again. It really settle in. We settle down. We connect into this place of presence here. That we you're here. We are here because there is something important for you. you know, connect into what is it that you want to really create and that field of resources that can really help you to bring that into reality. And then we form that timeline. We're going to just walk through again, as you know, the day. So day one, what is it that would be the most important thing in day one as you move towards that? Huh? Let your body find that key step. And then to the next day. What needs to happen next? What seems to be the most significant thing that keeps you moving in that direction? When you can feel the sense that. Take the next step to day three. What is it to be happening here? Each step closer and closer to that intention. Reaching there.
And then that final step. Here I am. All coming together, putting it into place. I've done it. Great. Second round. Now, again, at each step, we open to that step and to its obstacles. We find the obstacle and just bring it into a coach state. So, starting that connection to yourself, your intention, your resources. Go to the first step. This is what I want to do that first day. Where do I meet? Obstacle, resistance, interference. When you find it, welcome. Welcome. Staying connected to coach state. Holding that. Connected to your intention, yourself, your field of resources. becomes part of it. Next step. Where do I meet that obstacle? Where will be the guide? Finding it. Welcoming. Form you, staying connected to the coach, generative state, my intention, deep center, all those resources that are there to support me. are just two of the deep structures. So, so sometimes by just going in this slow, content-free way, it actually is opening a deeper space. You're not thinking about what if, whatever. And, and you, you generally know that you're tuned in because your body will begin to speak to you. You, you find you start to have some movement and, and something in your body will gently say, no, it, it's this instead. So try to find that quality where as you think you're moving this way, you know that your deeper intelligence could take it a different way at any moment. And you're just looking to, to be connected to both of those levels. Now, <clears throat> we're going to have you be with the same partner. It's... It's 10 till 9, so five minutes each. Then we're just going to come back and we'll kind of wrap review up. with you. We'll wrap up and, uh, for that last step. So five minutes each, same partner. We will ring the bell when it's five minutes to let you know it's time to change or so hopefully you will have, be close to changing.
here, really? Yeah. Well, we can zoom in on you. And you have more light on you this way. So just a brief message to our live stream viewers uh, while you're practicing. If you don't have a partner, hopefully you can walk through this yourself. I think it would be a way of incorporating this and getting this. So hopefully you're able to find your way to walk through these steps with us. So uh, we will see you back in just a few moments. been five minutes so you want to be switching partners soon. If you've made our acquaintance to ripen, I'll try hard not to be forgotten again. You may listen to this network with assurance that all sources of news will be properly labeled and will bring you frequent summaries of all information available.
Finish up with your partner and come back. Okay, everybody. I have to say, you looked good out there. I saw some good somatic movements out there. Uh, I know it's already, I know it's already past nine, and many of you have just are just uh, arriving from different time zones. So we don't want to hold you longer, but we do want to say just give some suggestions about the last step, which is the step of practice. 
And How many of your mothers said, sweetheart, you're only as good as your practices? <laughs> Nobody? Nobody? None of your mothers <laughs> said that? So let us be your honorary mothers <laughs> and say, you're only as good as your practices. What, what I think is important to say when you're doing generative change sessions, any kind of change sessions with a client, whether it's individual or group, is nothing has changed yet from this session. What the session has awakened is a possibility. But it's not actual yet. So for you to be able to translate it into a reality, you need to have commitment and practices. We like to say it's the same thing as if, you, if somebody says to you, I, you know, I, I don't need to brush my teeth. I already know how to brush my teeth perfectly. I, know, I already know that. I know how to brush my teeth. Why, why do I need to do it? It's the practice that is the thing that makes the difference. The, you know the, the old joke about the tourist who says to the New Yorker, how do you get to Carnegie Hall? Carnegie Hall is the big performance center. Do you know the answer to that? Practice. 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 <laughs> There's a great Russian pianist who was 80 years old. He was like the greatest pianist in the world. And he still practiced hours each day. And he said, if I don't practice one day, I notice. If I don't practice two days, my critics notice. If I don't practice three days, my audience begins <laughs> to notice. So what we're trying to foster is the sense of how to practice your creativity on a daily basis. So we are going to assign a practice, as we might in our own generative change work, which is what you just did. We want to have you take somewhere between five and ten minutes each day, the next three days, next four days, and do that practice. That is, walk through those steps that you just did. It can be in the morning, uh, when you first got up, uh, for me, many of you know, I have my, already my morning practice where I run. And very often it's where I'm running, I'm going through those kind of things. I'm, and he's I'm, completely absorbed. There have been a number of cities <laughs> where I see Robert, I'm out on my morning walk, and hey Robert, <laughs> oh, oh, yeah. he's like, <laughs> he's in his practices. I'm like, <laughs> hey Robert. <laughs> But, but we're actually, we're joking, but I think you're sincere yeah, about yeah. that. And I, I do the same in my own way. So we're really strongly recommending for you and for the people that you're working with is that emphasize daily practice. I, at this point, I don't accept that many new clients, but those I do, I require them to make a commitment to practice 45 minutes a day. What do people say? That sounds interesting, but... Can't you see I'm such a busy person? When I get more time, then I'll practice. Ah, sorry, illegal. <laughs> Unacceptable answer. And I can guarantee you that if you do the practices, you will have more time in the day for enjoyment and creativity. And you, most people I, you know, study, fill about four hours of, of, of a day at least procrastinating, uh, sur uh, internet surfing, those are all places where your mind is saying, let's take a break from the performance self and let's go into the creative world. So you can either eat donuts, jelly donuts all day, or do generative trance practices, generative change practices. Change practice. So in fact, to get the experience, that's why we're saying, to actually get an experience of why we say this and what it means, we want you to make a commitment to do this. What we just did tonight, you don't have to make it all up again, you already know it, but to walk through that, so you're opening the coach field, you're reconnecting to your intention, your generative state, your field of resources, you're going through each of those steps once, you know, with the somatic models, they may evolve a little bit day to day, of course, as you do it, that's something you may notice. Second round through, what are the potential obstacles? Now the good news is, tomorrow, well actually the day after tomorrow, 
you only have three steps. And then after that, you've only got two. The last day, there's only one. So it should get easier. Uh, but what happens on the fifth day? <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> Just practice celebrating. Mm -hmm. um, but I mean, there will also be this, that obstacle there. But, but actually, to make the commitment to do that and see what happens. What does evolve? What does emerge? What difference does it make to do something, commit to doing it as a practice? So he said, five minutes. He said 45. He said that's I what said he says 45 to clients. with a client. I'm saying for this exercise, you don't, hopefully it doesn't take you 45 minutes. <laughs> uh, so Steve was saying when he hires, has a client, but that's for something, a different purpose than this. And a final comment from my end. Uh, one of the distinctions that I really hope that we can continue to develop in the next four days is the difference between muscle-based thinking and nerve-based thinking. Okay, the, the Chinese call it qi, the Japanese call it ki, we might call it grace, but we really have these two very different minds. What we call the quantum mind is this place of deep imagination. Uh, one of my uh, mentors at Stanford was the great neuroscientist Carl Prebrom. Any of you know Carl Prebrom? Was, as you do NLP, he's the guy that developed the tote uh, mechanism idea. But more importantly, he developed over, he died at 98. Um, he developed over 60 years these models of the brain as holographically organized. And he slowly arrived over the decades at this research-based uh, model where the brain was simultaneously creating quantum and classical realities. So it was the dreamer world and the realist world, to use Robert's language, at the same time. So that's what we're talking about, is going between these two worlds where everything is fluid and possible and you can go anywhere from anywhere to this particular choice and this particular action that I take now. And what he would emphasize is the three basic ways that the brain shifted from a quantum to a classical patterning was intention, tension, and attention. Okay. So anytime you said, this is what I want, your sort of Monet painting turned into a figure ground. Any time that you were tense, the tension is a way of instructing the brain, hold that map, hold that map, lock into that map. Okay? Any pattern of attention is taking that Monet field and creating a figure ground. I see that against a background. So that's what we need for action. But if we stay in that map, our action will become stale and will become problematic. So we're trying to, in American card playing, we say you gotta know when to hold them and when to fold them. When to keep your maps, when to throw your cards in, give me some new maps. So going into that quantum world, which means you have to let go of muscular tension, is crucial for continuing to go back to the well. Back to the well, then out into the well. Back to the well, out into the well. So when we do these slow Tai Chi-like somatic models, we're looking, we're making sure as a coach that any time we see the person somatically locking, that's one of the things we have to coach that is one of the differences that make a difference to be continued over the next four days. I think uh, just my final comments would be, uh, again, this notion that we're, we are working tonight with this idea of, of deep structure. Um, that this idea that uh, Judy Delosier likes to quote from the uh, people in Papua New Guinea, that knowledge is only a rumor until it's in the muscle. And the idea here is we wanted you to get, get, those, get those six steps, that deep structure in the muscle, content free in the muscle, because then it's there as your primary guide. And no matter what, what is going on, that's going to become sort of your basic path. So again, to be continued. Uh, so tomorrow morning, there are, I think, several things going on. Um, 
there's this room, and just so everybody knows, the other two rooms are just directly across this uh, square, this plaza. The fireside lounge is the one that's farthest to the right facing that way, and the other is the, is the one next door on the left side. Um, uh, as we break, we want to wish you and thank you to our live stream members as well who have been joining us, and hopefully you had a, also a chance to do some practice while we were practicing. Um, for uh, any of the presenters and moderators, Lily would like to see you in the Fireside Lounge right when we close. So just for a few minutes, any All presenters, presenters and moderators, moderators meet yeah. over there just for a short and, period. And another announcement, Jean-Francois? The, the, the demo you've seen uh, from uh, Robert and Steve were, are on the Facebook page for all attendees. So if you want to rehearse and practice, you have both oh, that's demos. Great. That's great. Wow. That's great. Thank you. Okay. Uh, so the best thing that you can all do now is get a good night's rest. Uh, we'll see you tomorrow. Thank you.